Judy, what are you doing? Huh? <laughs> I'm looking for a new episode of Garden Time. Well, you found one, and there's a new episode of Garden Time starting right now. Welcome to Garden Time, and for our Portland viewers who have been searching for us, we just want to let you know that we'll be at 9 o'clock for the rest of the season. We are standing out here at the beautiful Oregon Garden, and we are celebrating their annual brew fest. Now later in the show, we're going to be talking to Sarah about that. Also coming up in the show today, some unique maples. We're also going to be telling you about coleus, an often overlooked garden plant. But first, favorite fragrant plants. So I'm standing here with Sarah and we are at Portland Nursery on Stark Street and we're going to be talking about fragrant plants but before we jump into these beauties, Sarah, you know, fragrance is a weird thing, isn't it? Because I think that there's a lot of things you can crush, some people can smell certain fragrances, others can't, but these really, you picked some winners that pretty much everybody can smell. Yep, these will be wafting down, you right. know, quite a few feet and you'll be like, what's that smell? What's that and actually <laughs> I have like a front row seat right here. So. Yeah, you do, you do indeed. <laughs> But, you know, let's start with the ones behind us, roses. There's, yes. there's a lot of those. Tell me about them. Yes, there's a lot of different kinds of roses, some more fragrant than others. Um, but, you know, it's the classic fragrant flower. It's beautiful as a cut flower that you can bring in. Um, and, you know, they can actually be really easy care. We are the rose city here. And yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so it, it's, it's something everybody needs. Rose. And certainly ones like Double Delight. I mean, that fragrance, that's just everybody can smell Double Delight rose. It's absolutely stunning. Yeah, they, they, they can be very and I can, I mean, I can smell these from here. Yeah, right, yeah. right. So let's talk about this beauty. It looks like a vine. Yes, this is one of the only vines I really recommend for shade. Yeah. Um, and it's also fragrant, so it makes a great addition to like a back porch or a front entry somewhere where people are going to be walking by. They can have that nice fragrance that just really brings like a whole different feel to the area. And and we should say that you know we have been told all of our lives this is sun, sun, sun. But you and I have talked about this before. We have both found that it, it actually does quite well in some shade. It, it can, yeah, and uh, yeah, people. A lot of people don't recommend it for shade, but I'm I'm on the you know jasmine for shade train. Well, so. I, I'm going to stand on that <laughs> hill with you then because I've also used it there. So this the herbs, come on, they're yep. lovely. I mean, so many herbs are going to be fragrant. Lavender is again a classic that you can use for so many different things. Um, it's pretty. It's got a great smell. You can cut it and use it for sach sachets. Um, so it's, it's one that the fragrance really stands out. It's known for fragrance. One of the things I love about herbs too, especially in the heat of summer, you can smell their oils. They heat up and you just walk through your herb garden and you can smell all these different fragrances. Lovely, plus you can cook with a lot of them. Yeah. Um, I love this. Mm -hmm. What is this? Daphne. Daphne mm. is one of the most known uh, fragrant plants and there's so many different types of Daphne that can bloom at different types of times of the year. Uh, my personal favorite, which is not this one, uh, is the Daphne Adorta right, right. Marginata. Yeah. Um, and that's because that I think is the, the best, most potent fla uh, fragrance. It, it <laughs> can be a flavor too, it's a type yeah, of sure. flavor. <laughs> it, and it's in the winter when we're all really in need of right, a little right. bit of bloom and, and fragrance. So. And the beauty of it being evergreen. Some of them are not, but mm -hmm. most of them are, but that one is just stunning year round. Mm -hmm. And this, of course, what a, what a dream. Yes, gardenia <laughs> uh, has got to be my number one favorite plant out of all that I've encountered um, because it's got such nice green leaves. Um, you know, there are some hardy varieties mm -hmm. here, um, relatively low maintenance, and you can't beat the fragrance or the flower. And this one, Clem's Hardy, this is actually one of the hardy ones. Mm -hmm. This one, yep. Um, Frostproof is another one that, yeah. that's really great. And here. there's several now that have, that have come out on the market in there the last are, few years. Yeah, there's new varieties coming out all the time. And I do love that it's another evergreen, which is odd to me. There's a lot of, of fragrant flowers that tend to lean toward the evergreen family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, the, for me, one of the fa my favorites is that it'll bloom, you know, May, June, and then again in September. And so you've really got a lot of, of blooms going. Right, right. So mm -hmm. you can extend that fragrance throughout the season a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Well, there you have it. You know, fragrance is something that it delights us humans. And so if you want to find out more information, remember there's all kinds. You can have evergreen, non-evergreen, sunshade, a lot of them can fit in any environment in the garden. So for more information on that, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to the Portland Nursery website. You can go visit the one on Division or the one here at Stark. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thanks.
Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. You deserve the best, so at Capital Subaru, we make sure you're getting the best experience at every touchpoint. Award-winning customer service, a wide selection of new Subarus to choose from, two years complimentary service on all new vehicles, and perks you'll only find at Capital Subaru. Start your next adventure on the Parkway. Kick off summer in the versatile new 2017 Subaru Forester 2.5i. Lease just $221 per month with zero down or make no payments for 120 days. Capital Subaru, your way on the Parkway. The health and beauty of your garden starts from the ground up and healthy soils begin at Grimm's Fuel. For the best in garden mulch, blended soils and bark dust, choose Grimm's. U-Haul delivered or installed, Grimm's can do it. And if you're looking for a new lawn, Grimm's can do that too with our special lawn installation service. Grimm's is also the area's largest recycler of yard debris. The foundation for a healthy garden begins at Grimm's Fuel. Dram is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. Dram products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. Dram for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Over the 30 years that our family has been in the nursery industry, we've learned that anyone can supply a customer with plants and garden supplies. But it's supplying those plants and supplies backed by a knowledgeable staff that can transform a garden and take it from ordinary to extraordinary. That's what we do at Sagawa Nursery. Why be ordinary when you can be extraordinary? Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. I'm at Blooming Junction in Cornelius, Oregon, and I'm with a special guest, Talon Buckholtz. Good morning. Good morning. And you're from Buckholtz Nursery, which is a wholesale nursery. Yes, that's And he has really developed many of these maples that we're talking about, Japanese maples. So they're beautiful. And at Blooming Junction is one of the few um, local nurseries that you sell to. That's right. Yeah, they have access to uh, hundreds of varieties. Wow. And uh, they're all different, as you can see. And we just brought a few out here to to uh, show you the diversity in the Japanese maples. Really, and they're very unique. And this one here, I can't believe the variegation on it. What is this one? That is, um, is called Mikasuki, and that's a Japanese word that uh, means um, like a crescent moon hmm. due to the lobe being uh, curved somewhat. Beautiful. And then how about how about big, big would this one get? Well, in time, this will get to be uh, probably 15, uh, 16 feet tall, and maybe as, as wide as that as well. But that's over many years. Yeah, very nice variegation, and the newer foliage is gonna have maybe a little bit more variegation than it'll kind of um, darken down? Yes, and in, in fact, it's it's dull compared to what it looks like in spring. Wow. So it, it's still pretty pretty lively with color, but uh, the spring is, uh, spring has passed. We've already had our 90 <laughs> degree days. And <laughs> right. So, yeah. Well, and then this one be, uh, below it that has the white foliage, that's really unique. Yes, um, that one benefits from some afternoon shade. Um, it'll get as tall too, 15 feet or so. And uh, in the spring, a lot of this is more pink than it is. I, they have this in, in the shade over here. So uh, when it's in shade, you don't see the pink color so much. Um, it's, a, it's a variety that uh, likes afternoon sun, but then, or rather morning sun, but afternoon shade. Pretty. And the name of that one? Th this one's called Alarian. Oh, very nice. And uh, it's actually named by an employee of mine who selected that variety. Uh, he was going through seedling maples and he saw one with, with variegated leaves. Mm -hmm. And so he, he uh, s set it aside and at the end of the day he brought it to me and showed me and I said well you know if this ever amounts to anything we'll name it after you uh -huh. and that was uh, 15 years ago Wow! and so yeah it's a very popular variety. And Talon what is this one below here? Oh uh, that's a variety called Manyo no Sato a Japanese name obviously and it's known for its variegated leaf which uh, has purple and then the lime green variegation. Um, so, so it's a uh, medium-sized tree, upright tree, and uh, never will get too large. Ah, so maybe for a container? 
uh, all of these work as a container. Oh, that would be great because sometimes we just don't have the yard r r yard room exactly. anymore. Exactly. Yes. That's great. And then this larger one up here. This is very pretty. Well, that's a wild-looking maple, isn't <laughs> it? That's called Geisha Gone Wild, ah. and uh, it, it originated uh, at our nursery, and um, it was a a mutant branch that came off of another type of foliage, and then we propagated from that branch, and so. Uh, it was it was it was just something that was kind of a wild looking <laughs> variety and it got, the name. it got that name yeah and should this have a little shade in the afternoon oh uh, that takes full sun and oh, is beautiful perfect. in full sun nice. more colorful than you see even here wow wow and then this one is stunning this one is ruby stars which i think is very unique that f uh, pattern of the foliage yes it it starts out uh, with a purple red color very nice and then as that begins to fade as you can see from some of these leaves to more of a greenish color, mm -hmm. then you always have new growth coming on as in ruby stars. <laughs> so uh, when you see a larger one in, in the landscape, it can be very colorful in the middle of the summer with this new growth that's wow. always bright red. That is very nice. And then this gold tone with the red stems, that's really attractive. Yes, um, this is a variety called summer gold and it'll take full sun. And that's the good thing about it, a golden plant that that can grow mm -hmm. in the sun. If you look closely, you'll see kind of some reddish uh, edges to the leaf and, and the veins are a little bit red, but um, a, a beautiful plant for the sun. Very nice. And this with these tiny leaves, that's really very unique. Yes, yeah, so that's a dwarf uh, vine maple. It's the most dwarf of any to date. Wow. And um, uh, normally the leaves are the, the size of these, these tiny ones here. When they're in a container, they get larger, uh, especially since they came out of a nursery setting. Uh. <laughs> but once they get planted in the ground, the leaves are maybe a half inch wide and uh, just a dense ball. That is nice. And then in the fall, it'll be uh, orange wow. to, to red fall color. And the name on this one? Oh, uh, that's called Baby Buttons. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Really, such a collection here, and I know that this is just a small collection of all the ones that you would have at your nursery, but so mm -hmm. nice to see how, out here at Blooming Junction. Yes, uh, that, that's right, and, and uh, as far as the Japanese maple varieties, there's over a thousand of them, and uh, some look kind of alike, but as you can see from all of these, everyone's different, and uh, uh, some people like more I'm dwarf sure. or whatever, and, right. and uh, I think that... Uh, uh, just the diversity of all this is what uh, is interesting for me. Definitely. And you know, at Blooming Junction, they also have the collection of conifers from Buchholz Nursery. So if you want to come out to Blooming Junction to see these wonderful conifers and these beautiful Japanese maples, please go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to the Blooming Junction website and get all the information on how to get out here. Talent, thanks so much. They're just gorgeous. You're welcome. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. Gardening makes for wonderful family time. Whether it's updating your landscape or planting a veggie garden, at Portland Nursery, our great selection and staff of professionals can help ensure your family's success. Visit PortlandNursery.com for a list of our classes, events, or sign up for our newsletter. Portland Nursery, let our family help your family grow at 50th and Stark or 90th and Division. Experience more than 120 great beers, ciders, and meads from 60 breweries at the annual Oregon Garden Brewfest. Sip your beer while strolling through 80 acres of gardens, enjoying live music while tasting local foods. The Oregon Garden is less than an hour south of Portland in historic Silverton, and tickets start at just $15. For tickets to the Oregon Garden Brewfest, go to OregonGarden.org. Why have a yard that looks like everyone else? French Prairie Perennials can give you something different by using our unique form of landscape design, visualscaping. We can give you a landscape as unique as you are. Focusing on year-round color and low maintenance allows you to relax and enjoy your yard all 12 months. On-site plant demonstrations allow you to see how beautiful your garden will look before you buy. Give us a call or stop by our retail location on weekends. French Prairie Perennials.
Well, we have a unique segment today. We've talked to Rick Naylor from Visual Scaping and French Prairie Perennials many times, but we've never really come to a live space that he is going to do a beautiful new landscape. So we're going to be talking to Don, who's the homeowner. And Don, you have a lovely home and a very interesting backyard. So what happened when you first saw this property? Uh, well, I, I noticed how huge it was <laughs> and uh, how I, I really saw what it could be. It really has a lot of potential uh, to be really beautiful. It's just overgrown and needs some help. So uh, I contacted the realtor uh, that uh, helped us buy the house and um, she recommended Rick. So uh, here we are. <laughs> uh, and so were there specific things that you asked Rick to really kind of accomplish? Yeah, um, so we needed um, a space for my mom to be able to let our dog out at night and not have him wander off into the <laughs> creek. And then um, we needed it to be a little bit safer. It's a little bit uneven, there's some high steps, um, and just to clean it up, because it's a mess right now. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's that was our primary concern. Ah, well, now I'm going to talk to Rick about what his vision is. So, Rick, where do you begin in a project like this? Well, that's a good question. <laughs> um, the main thing that we do with any job that we we look at, we first start with what the homeowner's goals or requirements are. Obviously, safety was a big thing for Dawn, so we wanted to look at how we can make this property as safe as possible for her mom, particularly access to the river, so she could be down there oh. and just generally moving around. So. There's some key things that we had to do there, but because the property does have so much potential, is we also wanted to put in some unique plant material, which we always do of in course. every job, but and give her some 12-month color and something to really unique out here to look at, so that when they're out here, you know, we're enhancing the view, we're enhancing the whole atmosphere and uh, of of the whole the whole project. So. Ah, so really, this first phase is going to be all hardscaping. Well, yeah, the first phase, what we have to do is first make it so that her mom can let the dog out. So we're going to put a dog fence in that runs from the other side of the patio over there with a gate out in front so there's access in and out. And then the fence continuing around over, over to the, uh, the front side of the property there. And then put sod in here so the dog has places to go and it's, it's more comfortable. Uh, and do you recommend that for homeowners to go in phases? Is that really um, something that you like to tell your clients? Well, yeah, generally. I mean, you know, in a big situation like this, we have a lot of property. It can be overwhelming both mentally and, and financially. So <laughs> sure. sometimes it's better just to do things in steps. Just get the the most pri the thing you prioritize the most done first, and right. then just kind of work out from there. Huh. So. Well, that is, that is a great idea, and I think a really good tip for people that are contemplating maybe redoing their garden or starting a new garden or yard. Right. So the second concern that she had was access for her mom. So we're going to take... All of these brick out that you can see that here that are uneven and, and were done improperly and have settled and there's just a lot of stumbling, a lot of, a lot of oh, landmines sure. in Oh sure, it here. looks dangerous. Yep. A lot of landmines. So we're going to take all this brick completely out and we're going to put in a paver walkway um, with the help of our contractor, San Francisco Landscaping. We're going to put a uh, paver walkway that runs around, comes in, in, in adjacent to the patio so her mom has access and then running out here to the... To the uh, where the old walkway is. And then in addition to that, we're going to eliminate this step so that, and it has a gentle slope to it so there's no steps. So it just makes, makes it, you know, a lot a lot safer that way. Ah. So then the second thing we're going to have to do is there's a, was an old stone retaining wall out here that was, again, really improperly done. It's kind of falling apart and everything else. We're going to take all of that out, put in a block retaining wall that's much stronger, and then we're going to bring in some soil and kind of make it more level so that, uh, it's not such a steep slope that goes down. And then plant it with our unique, unique unusual plants that we do in every job. Ah. And then we're gonna take the, the brick that we have, they have some brick on the property and some we have all this brick in here. Use the recycled brick and build a, a pathway that goes out to the river area down here so as her mother has a lot safer access to the, to the, uh, to the river. Ah. And in addition to that, there's some steps here that we need to... So those are going to get finished Those are need to get finished and and not such a steep step, so it's more of a gentle, right. gentle slope. Well, as you can see in here, there's quite a few projects that will be going on at this property. So we're going to come back in just a few weeks and see the finished hardscaping and all the beautiful new plants. So we'll catch you in a few weeks. Thanks so much. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Hi, I'm Bro Mossel with Rare Plant Research. We're a nursery and garden. You're invited to join us the one week in the year that we're open to the public. You can tour our gardens and get inspiration for your own garden. We have 10 greenhouses full of rare and exotic plants. Enjoy lunch from a local caterer while tasting wine at the greenhouses. We will be sampling our wines from Villa Catalana Cellars in the Garden Conservatory Tasting Room. For directions and information, visit us at rareplantresearch.com. Join us and get inspired. When you plant your flower baskets and containers this year, consider Black Gold All-Purpose Potting Mix for the best results. This worm castings enriched, well-drained potting soil has a controlled release fertilizer to feed your plants up to six months. Black Gold All-Purpose Potting Mix now contains resilience for enhanced plant growth. Available at garden centers everywhere. For more information, visit blackgold.bz. All the riches of the earth. William, I'm serving you papers. Oh. Ah, but don't worry, it's a pair of three-day passes for the Oregon Jamboree. And if you want to know how you can lock up these three passes, all you have to do is go to gardentime.tv, send us your name in your email. So don't forget, enter today. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. So I'm standing here with Diane from Wavra Farms and Diane clearly when you love a certain plant you really jump into it because you love coleus. How many varieties do you grow here? Well currently I have 29 varieties in stock. <laughs> wow and I suspect <laughs> if you would probably get more. I you? would <laughs> but so, I just kind of ran out of a couple <laughs> and so I still have 29 varieties. Well we wanted you to pick out some of the varieties that you personally really really loved and you pulled these out. So let's go over what ones you picked sure. out and why you like them. So we picked out a new one and this is French Quarter. This is a brand new one that's out this year. And we love the pink that you usually right. don't see that, you know, very light pink with the green. So this is a fabulous little coleus and it will go full sun. Oh, that nice. So nice. he'll mix very well with a lot of your other annuals. Uh -huh. And he's going to give you some height in a container. So you don't always have to use a geranium. Or a spike. Exactly. Spike yeah, so that's it's going to add a little more variety to your basket. Uh -huh. Another very popular one that we love like is Kingswood Torch and again it's kind of that pink with the darker colors yeah. so this one pairs very well with other begonias and other colors and one of our light ones this is one of my favorite one is Gaze Delight and we love the lime green the, that chartreuse color yeah, with on the that. veining the dark that's exactly stunning. so it, it's perfect to pair with like some sweet potato mm -hmm. and bring yeah. out even more of that black beautiful so beautiful. it's a spectacular specimen. This one here, this is one of my absolute favorites, Campfire, because it's kind of got this pinky red hue to it. Y yes. And it right. depends. If you mix it with red, it makes this look more red. If you mix it with a pink color, then it just kind of pops it more of a mauve shade. And I have to say, Diane, I am becoming, I've never been a fan of the corally orangish colors so much, but in the last couple years, they're coming out with some stunning ones. They've come out with some spectacular lovely, ones. Lovely and they're indeed. not um, just kind of like a gaudy orange. Right, just a right. Very, they're not know, pumpkin orange. Exactly. Which is they're fine in soft. pumpkin time. But <laughs> right, but not this time of year when you're looking for right. something that's going to blend with some other colors exactly. in the garden. So, and then one of the other brand new ones that we have this year is called Skyfire. Lovely. Skyfire is a full sun and it is just spectacular with that little bit of chartreuse with the lighter red and the dark. So, Diane, I have to ask though, uh, are, are these going to come back every year? What's the mate? How do you take care of them? Well, unfortunately, as beautiful as the coleus are, they are only an annual. So unless you bring it in, we tell people about the first of September and treat mm -hmm. it as a house plant. With the first frost, they will be wiped out. Yeah, yeah. And then during the year then, how do you maintain them? Well, during the summertime, coleus is one of those things that you want to put out a little bit later. It's kind of the last thing you put out with impatience, just because a light frost will damage the leaves. Sure. During the summer, they love the heat. They like to be on a little bit on the drier side, which really helps for those people who don't like to water. And um, low water or underground water is usually the best. Usually you want to try to stay away from sprinkler system hitting those all the time just because it will damage the leaves. And do they require a lot of fertilization? 
No, really, they are very low maintenance. Perfect. So, you know, a little bit of Osmocote when you plant and they're good to go. And so, um, when, when people come out here, you, you can actually talk to them and tell them about all these different things and why you like them and why, why you actually spend time growing them, can't we you? We sure can. And we can help them pair things together and pair the coleus with other varieties that they can put in their garden. And just because we're talking about coleus, you also have a, a, a lot of other beautiful plants that you can blend with them. We can't? sure do. Well, there you have it. You know, if you want more information, we always invite you to go to Gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to their website. And then you can take a small trip out here and find some beautiful plants and coleus for your own garden. Thank you, Diane. Thanks for coming out. So during the Rose Festival, there was a very special weekend up here at the Washington Rose Garden, and I'm with Paul Robb and from the Portland Rose Society. And so Paul, explain to everybody what was the events up here. Well, this weekend was a two-day event with Saturday being open to the public for a judging of roses selected as the best roses on this given weekend. Uh, today was the culmination of that with a group of celebrity judges with hybridizers, members of the Rose Society, and, and some dignitaries where we picked the best rose on this given day. So really, it's everybody's personal choice. Very, um, we don't know the name of it, and so you just kind of look at that rose, and you have a scale of 1 to 10 and fragrance, and so um, tell us a little bit more about that criteria. Well, um, this is designed to be a competition where each individual, you don't need to be a judge, you just need to love roses. Everybody loves something different in the roses, whether it's color or fragrance or style. And we actually have a number of roses that we look at. We have hybrid teas, we have floribundas, grandifloras, shrubs. And so it's really something for everyone what their particular thing that they enjoy the most. Definitely, and so for the people's choice, what did everybody pick? Well, for the people's choice, um, actually their favorite rose um, is a wonderful rose called Dream Come True. Oh, it's a beauty. It is a beautiful rose. And for most fragrant, they selected uh, Summer Romance. Oh, another good one. A very good rose, yes. Uh, considering the weather, it was amazing how nice they looked yesterday. Oh, it is amazing. We had some uh, really bad rain squalls, didn't yes, we? Yes, we did. <laughs> And then what about today? The sun came out today, so it was a little different. Yeah, I'll take responsibility for that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get some kudos. <laughs> you do. Good, being, good chair. <laughs> no, but uh, it turned out very nice today, and it was uh, nice to get around the garden. You can see all the people here it's and crowded. how much they're enjoying this beautiful garden. Right. Um, it's rated one of the top five in the world. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And, and so what did we all choose? Well, today we chose if I can remember them off the top of my head. Um, the best uh, shrub was Champagne Cocktail. The best hybrid tea was Grand Amore. The number one Floribunda was Walking on Sunshine. And the best Grandiflora was Happy Go Lucky. Oh, that's so lovely. And the number one overall winner was Cinco de Mayo. Oh, beautiful. Gosh, yes. that was a gorgeous one. Yes, it was. Well, it was so much fun today. And you know, we do really invite everybody up here to the Rose Garden in Washington Park. It's tremendous. There is so many different roses to see and climbers and in the beds and all, all around. It really is a photo op and um, a smell-o-rama. It's, it's, it's an amazing <laughs> opportunity. Um, you, you come up here and you can spend hours and you always see something new, something different, something you love more than what you saw the last time you were here. Oh, it's true. It's so true. Well, if you need more information about the Portland Rose Society, you can go to that website or you can go to the Garden Time website. We'll tell you all about the Rose Garden up here at Washington Park, but you just have to get into the car or take the Max. There's a shuttle and you can get up to the Rose Garden and really enjoy it this summer. Thanks, Paul. This is wonderful. Thank you. It's wonderful. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. William, 
I'm serving you papers. Oh. Ah, but don't worry. It's a pair of three-day passes for the Oregon Jamboree. And if you want to know how you can lock up these three passes, all you have to do is go to gardentime.tv, send us your name in your email. So don't forget, enter today. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. I am at the Oregon Garden in Silverton with Sarah, and Sarah, there is a very special event happening today, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Today is our 13th annual Oregon Garden Brewfest. And how many beers are you having? We have 120 beers, Whoa. so each brewery is bringing two beers, so 60 breweries. Wow, wow. But there's for beer drinkers, but mm -hmm. there's other things going on. Absolutely. Yeah, we have root beer tastings as well, and uh, one of our food vendors is bringing wine slushies. Ah, so there's food vendors. That's cool. Mm -hmm. What are there, what kind of food are you having? Yeah, we have a pizza vendor. We have Northeast Creperies bringing in sweet and savory crepes. Uh, we have baked and loaded potatoes. Uh, our resort has a food booth as well, serving mac and cheese and hot dogs and oh, a lot yum. of fun stuff. Yum. And is there uh, music going on? Yeah, there's live music during the entire event. Uh, today and tomorrow, live regional bands. That is great. And then what is the time before we forget? Sure. Yeah. Today we're open from noon to 11 and tomorrow we're open from noon to 6 p.m. Uh, and so tomorrow is a little bit special because it's Father's Day. Yes. So what's going on for families? Yeah. So tomorrow we call it father, or Family Day. So we have kids crafts, um, different kids activities. We have the root beer, a lot of fun stuff. So bring your entire family down. Kids are allowed all day. Uh, and what I like too is that you can stroll the garden too while you're here. I mean, it's, it's wonderful to go see it. Yes, your admission into the event includes admission to the Oregon Garden. So you are more than welcome to grab your beer and stroll all 80 acres if you uh, like. That is so cool. And this year you offered camping, which is so cool. Yeah, that's right. It's too late to book your site for this year, but we wanted to add a new amenity, you know, to provide a safe place for people to sure. sleep. Our resort books up really quickly. Uh, so definitely something to keep in mind for next year. So, you know, you heard it here. Go to the Garden Time website and we'll click you over the Oregon Garden website. You can get all that information. And what a great way to spend the weekend, come out to the garden, see the garden and have a beer. Thanks so much, Sarah. Yeah, thank you. Well, I'm standing here with Jan McNeilan for our tips of the month. And Jan, it's that time of year when there's a lot to talk about, isn't there? So what, Always. Will, we, what will we be chatting Always. about today? Well, one of the issues in the ornamental garden is uh, azalea lace bug right. uh, bothering and doing in, so to speak, um, rhododendrons and azaleas. Um, there are two lace bugs. One's a rhododendron lace bug, which has been around for a long, long time, mm -hmm. and the azalea lace, lace bug. And the azalea one is the one that's been doing the major damage. Right. Um, and relatively new to our and area. Relatively new. And the, one of the big factors is that the rhododendron lace bug only hatches once a year. Right. And the rhododendron and the azalea lace bug, you, you get about four generations in a summer. Much more prolific then. <laughs> Much more. And right now, this is a roadie that's been bothered by it. It's stippling. Um, right. The azalea lace bug is a sucking insect and they suck from the lower side of the leaf and then it looks all like like you put salt on it. Um, and a lot of people think that's spider mites. Right, and that's similar. what spider mite looks like too. It's a sucking insect. But you'll see the insects on uh, the right now, the uh, nymph stages of azalea lace bug along the, the uh, midrib of the, of the leaf. Yeah. And so you can there are herbicides, or not herbicides, there's insecticides, but we encourage people to use, right now, when you know the nymph is there, a hard water spray is gonna get it, knock right. them off. Uh, horticultural oil works, but you have to remember that you're also, um, you're dealing with other beneficial insects that you don't wanna kill. Yeah, and any time that you do that, that you know, the, whether it's organic or not, it takes, it's not selective, is it? No, it's not <laughs> selective. And so make sure you know what you're doing and that uh, you're not spraying anything on anything that's flowering right, right. now for bees, right. et cetera. And one of the alternate hosts uh, for the rhododendron lace bug is Indian plum. It's a native shrub um, that right now I'm not seeing any, but we will by yeah. the end of the summer. So that's just two things to pay attention yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing has been brought up is mothballs. Yes. Whether or not they're effective to deter squirrels or rats or 
skunks Because there's rumors whatever. out there that that's, you can use them for different right. things. Right, just because you can buy it at the grocery store doesn't mean it's a good thing. It's True. not a natural thing. It is a chemical. It is not meant to be used as a repellent for any kind of insects. It is toxic to birds and mammals and kids and pets and Life. everything. <laughs> yeah, and so it's, it's not labeled for such and it shouldn't be used for a repellent. Yeah, so if you, if you think you want to use it, don't and then find think some of other another options. way. Yeah, think of another way. <laughs> so we're also going to be talking about mulching and all of that kind of stuff right, back in the back of the back. garden. Let's do okay. that. Okay. So now, Jan, we're you're actually about the mulch. You're going to talk about how how to put it on and why and all that stuff. Well, it, first of all, if you're going to do weeding, make sure you get the mulch on soon after, so you're not like if you wait for here. We have an acre. Yeah. If I waited till we were done weeding, I would have to start back at the beginning <laughs> right. and weed again. So mulch as you go. Um, and the thing of it is that you want it to look nice. This is just chips on the berries. This is from a tree service that way you get these uh, free chips. And it's okay for these berries to have three or four inches of mulch and it's fine. Um, but when you, it comes to ornamentals in your flower beds, um, make sure that it's not too thick around the root zone where, so that when you water, um, that it, the actually moisture the can actually okay. get down. Perfect. So there you have it. And, you know, another month has come and gone, and we'll see you next month again for more tips in the garden, Jan. Okay. Well, it is mosquito season, and I'm with Tom from Bonide. And Tom, you know, we love to be in our gardens, but they are so pesty, those mosquitoes. Yes, they are, and especially this year with all, with all the rain we've had, oh, yeah. uh, you know, three, four months of solid rain, there is water everywhere. Um, and uh, mosquitoes and insects in general are gonna be uh, terrible this year. Yeah, and so give us some education about mosquitoes. Maybe we've forgotten about what they're all about. <laughs> you really wanna know? Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay, so mosquitoes, there's a couple different strains. Um, the female is the one that it goes searching for us. <laughs> the uh, the female is looking for blood, and that's why they bite us. Um, the female is the one that lays eggs, and it has been um, researched and tested that they could lay up to 100 eggs <sighs> Jeez, no yeah, wonder why. <laughs> and so that creates a lot of little babies mm -hmm. um, and uh, they're looking for water. Uh, that's where they're going to lay the egg and uh, from there the larva um, hatches to an adult and goes looking for us. Ah. Exactly. <laughs> so what can we do? I mean, before we get to any kind of product, is there something we can do in our gardens and our yards to really stop that? Yes, uh, Bonide, uh, who I represent, we have a number of different products. Okay. Uh, we even have natural products. Great. And the, the first one I have here on this cutting board <laughs> is what we call the Mosquito Beater Water Soluble Pouch. Perfect. Now, each one of these pouches will treat 50 square feet of water surface. Oh, wonderful. Now that can be a bird bath, mm -hmm. that can be a little running ceramic fountain. Okay. It could be a koi pond. Wonderful. So these water soluble pouches contain Bacillus thuringiensis. That's a natural pesticide. It's safe for fish, so safe for koi and goldfish, and it's safe for the aquatic plants in that uh, water feature. Ah. So for this bird bath, you really only need a quarter of one of these pouches. Oh, it's pretty so I tried to cut it, but it didn't really <laughs> cut uh, how I wanted. So basically, all you need for the bird bath is about pinch. that much. Okay. And you just simply can throw it into the bird bath. The pouch will quickly dissolve, and then the BT, the Bacillus thuringiensis, gets dispersed. And if there's any mosquito larva there, it will quickly die. Uh. And you know, sometimes in my garden I forget like my little weed bucket here, and so really I should dump out any kind of um, water that I don't want. Just True. Dump out those uh, again, and the, the mosquito is looking for a wet area, okay. a, a wet area, whether it's a bucket full of water, a bird bath, mm -hmm. or this little fountain Let's we go have. Over here. Um, and that's where they're going to lay the eggs. Right. Um, now, it doesn't have to just be standing water. Oh, so okay. like this area here, we have wet, moist soil right. around the feature. That is enough moisture for the mosquito, the female mosquito, to lay its eggs. Wow. And so we could use this product in a little fountain like this too. Yep. Again, one pouch treats about 50 square feet of, of surface. So again, just about a quarter or a half of one of those water mm -hmm. pouches right into the waterway is all you need. And it'll feed in there. Yep. 
Well, that makes it really easy, and I know that you have some other products at another part of the garden and the patio that we can use, so let's go over there. Okay. So, Tom, this is just an area of the garden, so what would we need to put here? So, this, this is the landscape. We're very near the bird bath or the water feature. So, once the mosquito larva hatches from the water, they're going to be looking for a resting area, oh. and they're going to be looking for our plants to, uh, to feed off the nectar of the plant or the plant oh, juices. Okay. So, I have mosquito beater in a granular form. Um, this is a natural product, so it's, it's basically essential oils about four or five different oils. Uh, and in a granular form, you can just take and sprinkle it around the landscape plants. Um, it won't harm beneficial insects. Oh, that's good. And it's simply going to repel the adult mosquito from entering the landscape for up to about three weeks. Oh, that is good. So really, you're entertaining tonight, put it on in the afternoon, and really you're gonna be mosquito free. Yeah, so that would be our natural choice, okay. the mosquito beater granules. All right. And then for larger areas, and, uh, and I do want to point out a synthetic choice, so this would be a chemical, okay. but still very safe. We have the mosquito beater flying insect as a concentrate, um, and um, for applying into larger areas of the landscape, this is very adequate as well. Ah, that is good, and really another way to, to kind of keep that out of your garden, keep it out of your um, guest's area. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, we have one more spot, an entertaining area, so let's go there and talk about a product. Okay. So Tom, now we're on our deck and we're going to be having a party tonight, so what can we use? Well, so one of the, the most uh, convenient things to use would be the Mosquito Beater uh, Yard Fog. Uh, this is an aerosol product um, and it will send out a burst of a fog every time you, you press on the top nozzle. Um, so it's great for high school graduation parties, college graduation parties, or just enjoying the outdoors this summer. Um, but, you know, I'll also state that um, for camping, you know, oh, camping season is upon us. Sure. Uh, because of the application method, again, a, a bur quick burst of fog, you can treat the landscape plants around the sitting area or at the campsite. Um, and it does have some instant knockdown action for the mosquito and the flying insects, but then also will prevent any reinfestation for about three to four, maybe five hours after. Oh, that is nice. So great for outdoor parties, great for our camping season that's upon us. Um, and just ease of use is really neat about this product. Uh, we are feeling a little breeze just now, and so what about that? Uh, the breeze can affect it, so um, try to use this uh, when wind as it is at a minimum. Um, and if you're spraying around the plants, just get close to the plants, sure. quick burst, let it fog that area, um, but do try to do it on a calm day. Oh, sure. And then where can we find all these products? So if you'll just visit bonide.com, look for the dealer locator. From there, you will find your uh, local retailer that stocks the Mosquito Beater products. Uh, well, you know, Bonide has so many different products that you could use in your garden, on your deck, in your entertaining area. So really, you're going to have a pest-free or a less pest um, summer this year. So go to Gardentime.tv. We'll click you over the Bonide site and really enjoy your garden this season. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. stages, 25 shows, one sweet weekend. It's the 25th anniversary of the Oregon Jamboree, presented by Boulder Falls Inn, starring Jason Aldean, Little Big Town, Chris Jansen, Lauren Elena, Chase Rice, and on his farewell tour, Kenny Rogers. You got The Oregon Jamboree, happening August 4th through the 6th. Tickets and camping on sale now at OregonJamboree.com. Let's get this thing started. It's my kind of party. Hi, I'm Bro Mossel with Rare Plant Research. We're a nursery and garden. You're invited to join us the one week in the year that we're open to the public. You can tour our gardens and get inspiration for your own garden. We have 10 greenhouses full of rare and exotic plants. Enjoy lunch from a local caterer while tasting wine at the greenhouses. We will be sampling our wines from Villa Catalana Cellars in the Garden Conservatory Tasting Room. For directions and information, visit us at rareplantresearch.com. Join us and get inspired. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants, four generations of garden know-how, fun and fantastic garden decor, and the best in garden supplies. 
Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. Join us for Berries, Brews, and Barbecue, now happening three weekends in June, featuring Oregon Craft Ciders and Brews and Barbecue. Enjoy barbecue. You pick strawberries, hay rides, live music, and much, much more. It's farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. Well, I am at a beautiful garden that is on a garden tour today, and I'm with David West, who is the designer of this garden. And David, what is the name of your company? My company is Structures and Landscape, and we're here with the ANLD tour, garden tour for 2017, June 17th. And the ANLD is the Associated Northwest Landscape Designers. And this year we have seven wonderful gardens. You're oh. actually on garden number three right now. Okay. And what we hope to do is have you come out and view a whole array of unique site conditions and unique properties. Ah, that is true, because we all have different gardens, don't we? We have <laughs> many, many types of gardens. And this one has got a huge issue with slope retainage and water issues. And this was a complex process for about two years to, to wow. kind of tackle a slope. And uh, it just has basically one of a kind of everything on it. Uh, so what was one of the challenges? The biggest challenge was just getting the materials up the tiny, <laughs> tiny access we had. We had about six foot of access to get through over 900 tons of material. Whoa, whoa, whoa. But I could see that now it's so usable because you said before it was just a slope with a little bit of a patio, but now it's like terrace. The kids can have good time. They can come and have a fire. Really, really lots of things to do. It went from a garden where it was almost impossible to pull the weeds. <laughs> the client would come up on, would be climbing the hillside trying to pull the weeds out. And we terraced it with multiple terraces and multiple flow patterns. So now the kids can have a fireplace here. There's a large rumper style fireplace down below. During party events, people can move throughout the whole property. And you have layer after layer of different outdoor garden sites to hang out with. Uh, and I know that a lot of infrastructure underneath, there's drainage and then retaining walls, unbelievable. Yes, yes, there's probably over 12 trucks of concrete <laughs> just for the substructures to hold this facility up. Wow, wow. And tell us about the plant material because there's something blooming, I think, all the time. We have, we start with witch hazels in the early February and we move throughout with roses and many perennial stalks, a lot of little sedums hidden in all the little nooks and crannies. We have a, a whole mixture of trees. We have garden boxes that have vegetables during the summertime and also boxes that get planted with uh, year-round perennials and some annuals for spot color. So it truly is a blooming is in cycle almost full year time. Uh, and you know, so many people do live on slopes. So really to come here and see this garden and some of the other gardens really give you an idea of what can be attained and maybe I do need to come and see a professional. A garden like this would require a heavy handed contractor. <laughs> but on the garden tour for today, you're gonna to see seven unique gardens. There's two that we have designed and two by Marsha Westcott Peck, who's of the Oregonian. Mm incredible plant material that she has and you'll see such an array of unique plant material really really beautiful systems that are overlapping textures and colors and you can learn more in one garden visit than you could reading 10 books oh that is so true and to see it in in a garden setting take pictures bring your friends and kind of talk about it and i think that it, it is a, a lesson to be made and how i can do it maybe in my garden with a little bit of help i think so and just to give that one idea that might push you over the edge or, or <laughs> might change your thought process and say, that's an excellent idea. Right. That's going to work for me. Right. So how can we get tickets to come? So the tickets will be available at garden number one and garden number seven. Basically, the tour starts in, in a clockwise loop. And so at garden number one, tickets will be for sale. We will have a few tickets here at garden number three okay. due to the proximity to the park next door. And tickets are $25 a piece. And I think that would be... Uh, money well spent. So how do people find out where garden number one or garden number seven are? You can go to the ANLD website. That's ANLD.com and look for the 2017 garden tour and there'll be listed on sites the addresses and starting garden number one and number seven. And where does the money go? Because it's a great, great idea. It's a great question. So all the proceeds that are in excess go towards the scholarship fund for the local community colleges. Ah, that is and that great. helps these young designers who are coming up the ranks to get sure. to see these gardens and to understand where they're going to be heading to in the future. Ah. Well, you know, it is a great event, so much information, a big education for you. So please go to Garden Time. We'll click you over to that website and really come out today and support all of this, but see some beautiful gardens. Thanks so much, David. You bet. Thanks so much.
In the summer months, water use can double or triple due to outdoor watering. Here are three simple tips to help save water and money this summer. Set your sprinklers so that they're watering your lawn and plants and not the pavement. Water early in the morning or later in the evening when temperatures are cooler. Group plants with similar water, shade, and sun needs together. For more water conservation information and tips, check out the Regional Water Providers Consortium at www.conserveh2o.org. Join us for Berries, Brews, and Barbecue, now happening three weekends in June, featuring Oregon Craft Ciders and Brews and Barbecue. Enjoy barbecue. You pick strawberries, hay rides, live music, and much, much more. It's farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. Walking into standard TV and appliance is immediately an awe-inspiring moment. Not only are there vast displays, but there are functioning kitchens. To be able to stand in a kitchen setting and look at appliances and touch them and feel them and see how they work is a huge benefit for us. Whether it's a contemporary kitchen or whether it's more of a classic setting, it gives people ideas and gets people excited about the finished product. Since 1947, we set the standard. Standard TV and appliance. Come to where the color is. Come to Egan Gardens. We've worked hard growing healthy plants for you so that your gardening is easy. Add sparkle to your garden with our perennials, container plants, and skillfully designed baskets and planters. Don't worry if you're getting a late start on your planting. We'll have fresh new crops of heat-loving perennials and annuals all summer. Remember, any place that can have flowers should. Egan Gardens, where it's all about the plants. We're located west of I-5 at exit 263 on River Road. Since 1982, the wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, the wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. So I am standing in a beautiful community garden and I'm here with Jason and Jason, you are from Growing Gardens, right? What, yes, what sir. position do you have there? So I'm the executive director with Growing Gardens. And I, you know, years ago I used to work at Portland Nursery and so I knew Growing Gardens from back then. This was like 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah, we just completed our 20th year. Wow. And Fill me in on what it is that you guys do. How have you evolved and what do you take care of? Yeah, that's a great question. So originally this started, uh, the roots, like I, I, I like to say, to this organization is that it started with our Home Gardens program. Uh -huh. uh, the Home Gardens program really is working with low-income individuals um, to get gardens built in their backyards. Nice. Uh, we do a three-year mentorship process. So again, it's not this just drop in a garden, good luck, see you later. Right. But we then work with individuals for three years with garden mentors in their own neighborhoods. So it really does. It's not just it's not just drawing people in to get them excited, but you know, that excitement fades early on quite often, and you guys yeah. actually stick with it. We'll stick with it, and we look at that trajectory of right. growing your own food, and what does it look like to become a lifelong food producer? That there are some barriers and battles that you come up against, insects that you might not have seen before, right. <laughs> weather changes, so that we're consistently with them, and it's one of the reasons really is about building food security and building that access to food. Um, but the other one is, is building a community cohesion and building a network of folks who are then focused in the same areas right. uh, about positive, healthy communities. And could we also then make the assumption that it's not just about those things, but it's about the gardener becoming confident that they can do it as For well. Sure. Yeah, I mean, out of our work, the self-esteem boost is through the roof. That people, when they start growing things, and maybe they've been told, oh, I can't grow anything in the past, but now that they're able to grow things and then harvest things right. and then consume them or give them to a neighbor, give them to a family member, that then builds that self-esteem. And it certainly enhances the community as well, I would think. For sure, 100%. So you did, you did go to homes, as, but you also did a lot of community gardens, and you've really expanded into those even more and more, like this one here. Yeah, so we're at Stevens Creek Crossing, which is a home forward property. Um, we've partnered with Home Forward in, in several properties around the city, but this is a specific garden that was redeveloped uh, about four years ago. And the idea was how to create a garden that unites the community. It's a new community. How do yeah, you then reunite actually. this community um, through agriculture? Yeah. So that's part of our Home Gardens program as well as, is looking at building leadership through agriculture. So another program that we have is called the Youth Grow Program, where we partner with nine low-income elementary schools around the city of Portland. 
uh, and we do garden-based education. So it's literally taking the classroom and bringing it out into the garden where we're tying it to core curriculum. We're co-teaching. We're bringing our own curriculum, again, doing a three-year or more mentorship of that school to then incorporate that into the administration and the culture of that school. Because as valuable as education is, the older I get, the more I realize, you know what really learns you well? Getting out there and doing yeah, it. It makes sure. all the difference in the world. Yeah, and I think just being honest that people and kids especially learn right. in different formats. And, and you so, also, don't you also do, uh, now you've expanded into helping different uh, uh, prison systems that you go in and help. Yeah, so we're the only organization um, across the nation that's doing work in 16 correctional facilities nice. around the state of Oregon. So uh, from Pendleton to Tillamook to Salem, we're doing nine months of core curriculum wow. within the prison systems. And then we're also doing production. So last year, we produced over 300,000 pounds of produce that went directly into inmates' meals. And from all this great effort that you guys put out, you also do a wonderful dinner type thing. In yeah, Chef of My Garden, the dinner yeah. series, yeah. It's been around, this is our 15th year doing Chef of My Garden dinners. Um, we're the only nonprofit organization that's doing a dinner that's this innovative, that we're partnering with top chefs top wineries around the state, and then nice. we're holding these dinners in private secluded gardens. And can I make another assumption yeah. that when you do stuff like this, you always welcome volunteers and, and people to come and help? For sure. There's volunteer opportunities across all of our programs, from helping be a mentor in a home gardens program or to working in a school, helping with our new summer garden camp that we're doing with elementary school kids. And then for volunteers who want to take on more of a responsibility, working in our Lettuce Grow program and being a consistent volunteer inside a correctional facility. Wonderful. Well, you know, I, I've, I've known about this place since 1996. When I first started back at Portland Nursery, I've worked with them. They're a great program, they do great things, and they teach all of us how gardening really can make us all better humans. Thank you so much, and for more information, thanks they so can much. go to your website. Our website, growing-gardens.org. Growing Perfect, thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. Thank you for watching today, and isn't this a stunning tree? It's the Japanese tree lilac, one of the unique plants that you'll see here out at the Oregon Garden. Thanks so much for watching today, and for, for more information on today's show, and certainly for more information on the Oregon Gardens and all the wonderful events that go on out here, you can always go to Gardentime.tv. William and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. Judy, yep. do you remember when I asked you if you liked me? I mean, if you really liked me? Yeah, I liked you on Facebook. Yeah, well, I need you to do that again. Well, we really need everyone to like the new Facebook page for Garden Time. So you just go to gardentime.tv and click on the Facebook icon and like us again for our brand new page. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.